From the Riffs! Hey, welcome back to From the Riffs. I'm Big Will Johnson. Connor Blair. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about magic and psionics. And uh, as I am a heavy melee guy, as you can tell, uh, we're going to let Carmen school you guys, and I'm going to ask him a few questions. So what's important to know when a player is getting into Rifts and they want to play that heavy magic user or psionics uh, character? Okay. Well, the first thing, uh, you're probably either going to be a psionic character, which means you're like a telepath. Um, think characters like Professor X or Jean Grey. That you have a, a host of mental abilities. Um, or you're going to be a mage, so Gandalf, the wizard, that kind of thing, where you have real traditional spell casting, um, like in most games. There are a few classes that blend the two, but most of them are one or the other. Um, in Palladium, magic uh, works on a thing called potential psychic energy, PPE for short, and it's basically the number of mana points or energy points that you use to cast that magic. Mm -hmm. All right, you get magic from a few different sources. I mean, this part you know about. Right. There's uh, personal PPE, which is you know the, the amount of energy each character has and generates naturally. Right. There's the lie lines. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nexus points where two lie lines meet, and uh, there's a whole, a whole bunch of power you can get there. Also, you can draw power from places of power, from PPE batteries, where basically something that you can put PPE into to hold it so you can use it again later. Um, you can do blood rituals, so you can like kill an animal or a person and take their PPE. And you can also get it from uh, rituals where other people say, you know, your character could come with my character and we could cast a ritual. Even if you weren't a magic user, you could still donate your PPE to me. Right. And I could use that to cast my spell. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to get this PPE. But once you have it, you use it to cast the magic. So that, that's how the, the core of the, it works. That's how it's fueled. Yeah, yeah, that's where it starts. And now, um, psionics... The reason why you're generally one or the other is because they have ISP points, which are inner strength points, and are basically your will. But they're kind of like um, uh, processed PPE. Right. So most characters will have, like, generally the ratio is one PPE equals two ISP. And uh, so a, a, a powerful psychic will have used and burnt up most of his natural PPE developing psionic powers and the power to use them. So they generally don't have um, ability to cast spells because they've burnt all that PBE um, trying to develop psychic powers. And so that, that's why you usually have one or the other. There's a few characters who kind of walk the divide. They're usually called mystics. And they're ones who have natural spell casting ability and natural psionic ability. Yet neither one is very high. So they're kind of like, you know, that the jack of all trades right. uh, of the of the never specifying magic. in one category or the other, but being able to kind of dabble on both sides of the line. Yeah, exactly. So they can do a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Um, well, going to magic first, I guess. Uh, basically, you have spells, um, different types of magic. The the primary one is called invocation. That's what most guys use. And there's spells um, in invocation from levels one to fifteen, and then there's legendary spells above that. And um, in this game, unlike most, you don't have to, your character doesn't have to be, uh, say, level 5 to cast a level 5 spell. You can be a level 1 character and cast a level 15 spell, or even a legendary spell, if you somehow learn how to do it. Um, you also don't have to memorize them or do any of those kind of things that other games do to put, like, an artificial restriction on it. Right. Instead, your, your mage knows the spells he knows, but he only has so many PPE. So if he burns all the PPE off... Well, then he can't cast any more spells that day. He's got to wait till he, he either goes to a lie line to get power back or rests and meditate <coughs> and gets his power back. Now, I have to admit, personally, that's one of the things I like about the Palladium system of doing magic um, with the limited experience I have is, yeah, is essentially I get a power pool and I drain from that power pool. It's almost like using a gun. Yeah. You know, when I'm out of bullets, I'm out of bullets. bullets yeah. And so I, I think a lot of times I lean toward if I'm going to play any kind of magic user or even a psionic character, I like to do that because it, it's or opposed to other systems where I'm just like, oh, no, I don't want to have to bother with all that. Yeah, because yeah, you have to figure thinking. out, oh, yeah, because in other games you have to like write up lists of spells you're going to know for the day and stuff ahead of time, and it's a real pain in the butt. This way, you know, you simply, you know, you have so many points and you know your spells and you cast whatever one you need to at the time. 
Um, heck, if you have like a PPE battery, even if you run out of power, you can draw power from the PPE battery and use that to cast your spells. Right. Or even um, there's like magical weapons that use PPE clips to power them. Uh, they're usually in the form of like handguns or swords or something. You can even drain the PPE from a PPE clip and cast a spell with it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do any of that. So it's a, it's a lot more flexible. It makes magic like a, a more like a utility, yeah. less like a uh, like a homework assignment. Yeah. <laughs> um, in here, basically, the the core to casting a spell is you have to have belief. So your character has to believe <coughs> that uh, magic is possible, and you know that he can actually cast the spells. Right. Then you have to have knowledge. So they have to know the spell that they're going to cast. Um, they have to have PPE. So they have to have the power to do it. And then they have to speak. In here. Um, Basically, all magic is vocalized. Um, there's a couple classes who can do some ways of doing it, like through dancing or other things, but uh, those are pretty limited. Uh, so mostly, you generally have to speak the spell up, and then you have to use uh, a number of actions, uh, your, your attacks per melee, um, to cast the spell. And since I can't do those right off my head, I, I got the page marked. Um, so uh, for levels um, one to five, that counts as one melee attack for the round. Levels 6 to 10 counts as two. And a levels 11 to 15 and Spells of Legend are three attacks per round. Did you just say 11, do you? Uh, 11 to 15. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, anyway, so it, that so that the, the more complex the spell, a little longer it takes to cast it. Right. So if you get shot, you know, you get shot while you're in the middle of speaking out that spell and you stutter, you blow your spell, right. and then so it's no good, and you have to start over again. But that's pretty much it for magic. Now there's a lot of different types of magic. You know, there's um, the invocations, there's necromancy, there's biomancy, um, there's cloud magic. I mean, each of the different world books um, in in rifts will have a bunch of different types. In Palladium Fantasy, there's some other different types of magic. There's elemental magic. Uh, there's uh, diabolists who do this written magic. Um, Those guys can be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> they can be really dangerous. Well, as long as they prepare ahead of time. Right. Um, They're like the Batman of spellcasters. Yeah, so, so there's there's a lot of different variety. Um, that's one of my favorite parts. My favorite character to play when I'm playing Magic user is a shifter. And we're probably going to do a video one of these days where we talk about how to build kind of the, the power button character. Where Carmen gets to glorify and, and, his shifter. And my shifter is my favorite <laughs> one in there because I... I, it rocks, and it's all like stuff you could pick right at, at the beginning, at first level, right out of the book. You don't even need to look for anything fancy. And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that, yeah. that's basically how spells go. Then we have the sonics, um, and like I said, sonic powers are your psychic, your mystic, um, you know, your your uh, telepath, anything like that. Their powers are basically divided into four types. So you have healing powers, so all the stuff like, I'm just going to read off a couple, uh, bio-regenerate, dead and pain, psychic surgery, uh, restore PPE, stop bleeding, you know, there's a whole bunch. Um, but basically anything that heals. Then you have physical powers, which are, um, you know, the kind of stuff you would see in, in a movie where people are using telekinesis to jump around or to, to reach out and grab the sword and pull it to their hand or that kind of thing. Um, that's all under physical powers, you know, levitation, all that kind of stuff. And then there's sensitive powers, and sensitive powers are, you know, uh, see an aura, sixth sense, telepathy, empathy, mind block, all that kind of stuff. And then there's the, the big, big time one is uh, the super psionics. Super psionics are the major league powers. They are the best of the best. But in order to have them, you have to be an OCC, an occupational character class that is psychic related, so that they give them the special name of psychic character class. They generally have less skills, um, and less equipment and that kind of stuff, but they have um, these powers to make up for right. it. And these are really, can be really kick butt. I mean, if you- Yeah, they essentially make you a superhero. I mean, yeah. they, they really do. Yeah, um, yeah I, I played a uh, Burster, I think? Yeah, Burster. Yeah, burster. You played Burster. Yeah. And, um, I was able to basically subdue an entire ship of people, yeah. uh, uh, Nazis, I think it was, yeah. based on just the minor powers that he was using. Yeah. So yeah, you can really, if, especially if you're a creative player, you're the kind of person who thinks outside the box with your abilities, and you're not relying on uh, just raw power, 
the, it's the small abilities that can make all the difference when you're playing the game because you don't necessarily have to draw attention to yourself to use certain psychic abilities. Yeah. So I, it was one of the few times when I did bother to play a psychic character. Yeah, the advantage the, the advantage of a psychic character is he, like you said, you don't have to you don't have to say anything, you don't have to wave your hands, you don't have to point, you just do it. So you could be sitting there drinking a cup of tea and then like make some guy over here go paralyzed with bio manipulation. Right. Or, you know, uh, make a guy's gun over there fly out of his holster and you know go skittering across the room. It, it it does it, it you know but and how are they going to know it's you unless they have a power to detect that somebody's using a psychic power they have no idea right and, and so you know yeah it can it can be pretty powerful the problem with psionics though as opposed to magic where there's lots of ways to get your ISP back um, or excuse me their PPE back ISP on the other hand there is basically only one way to get it back and that's through meditation or rest right. Um, you can't draw on a lie line. You can't do anything like that. Although lie lines do make you more powerful. Right. They do like, supercharge you. Yeah. They, they basically pump up all your abilities. Same with uh, um, places of power or nexus points. That they they all they all make you more powerful. But they but they they don't get you. They don't give you a way to get your ISP back any faster. So. Well, basically, because it's, it's based on internal strength. It's, yeah. it's you. Yeah. You generate your power. It doesn't come from an external. Source. Yeah, so it's it's uh, that's the big that's the big downside to it. But then again, like I, uh, most of the psychics, they, they usually have something cool that they can do outside of their psi powers, either for their skills or something. They generally don't have though the the like big skills, like they're not going to be a, a robot pilot or something. But they're generally going to have a half decent selection of like you know uses pistols or whatever. Um, but anyway, so that's basically an overview of uh, magic and psionics. Obviously, I'm not going to bother going into the individual powers and spells because that would take us forever. Right. <laughs> but uh, that gives you an idea of how they work anyway. So it's basically, you know, either you spend ISP or PPE, depending on whether it's psionics or magic, um, and uh, use those to do your effects. The other cool thing we should mention, though, is that um, unlike, um, you know, shooting a gun or whatever, you have to roll to hit, um, magic, you just do it. Now, sometimes the opponent will get a save. Right. But you don't have to do anything to make it work. It's one of the reasons why I like playing magic users. Because if you ask him, when <laughs> I play, I'm a horrible dice roller. When I'm the GM, I'm a godly dice roller. Natural 20. But, <laughs> but some reason, when I play, I can't roll worth a spit. And so using psionics and, and magic gives me a way not to have to roll the die. Yeah, um, exactly. But that's, oh, and uh, also psi powers, um, unlike magic, they're simply... Uh, one use of the power is one action. They don't get um, more than that, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, that's it for Magic and Sacks. Uh, there's nothing really else to talk about. So yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, get the books, get to it, get playing. And uh, as always, please subscribe, comment. We love your feedback. You guys have been awesome with that. And uh, we'll try to keep up with that on a more regular basis. Yeah, like the and, videos. Uh, please suffer the commercials. I know some of them aren't as great as others, but. Uh, they help us pay the bills. Anyway, I'm Big Will Johnson. Carmen Blair. And we'll see you next time on Front of Rest.